Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, and I'll be your moderator. Our speaker today is Lancet Van Gilder, and she will be discussing all things hygiene hand pieces. At any point during the webinar, we do encourage your participation. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll get to them live at the end of the webinar. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation, live or on demand, and this webinar is sponsored by Premier Dental. With that, it's all yours, Lance. Excellent. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and thank you for Premier Dental for sponsoring this really timely and important webinar. Um, today, uh, my name is Lancet, and I'm going to be talking about hygiene hand pieces and some really easy and expensive kind of go-to strategies for infection, infection prevention and safety. So thanks for joining me. Um, we know that there is a lot of innovation kind of going on right now with infection control and dental products and dental services. What I'm really excited about is, you know, that companies are really stepping up to the plate to create this more efficient and safer practice environment, which we know is super important right now during COVID, but you know, it's gonna be important all the time moving forward. So today we're gonna to specifically be talking about hygiene hand pieces and how we might be able to minimize the control and control the volume of aerosols and splatter kind of being generated. We're going to talk specifically, spend a little, most of the time, a little bit of time on the University of California research that came out talking about the advantages and considerations of cordless and um, hand pieces. So I'm really excited today to get to dive into this research and just really kind of talk through some evidence-based strategies on all the possibilities that we as dental hygienists have to reduce aerosol and splatter. So I think it's really important for us to just kind of start with understanding, you know, the risks, starting from a place of awareness and understanding the risks, specifically looking at practice solutions for dental aerosols and splatter regarding dental hygiene hand pieces. So before we kind of dive in to the bulk of the research, um, let's start with a poll question. How many of you use a cordless handpiece? Yes or no? Do you use a cordless handpiece? I'm really excited to say that I've used a cordless handpiece now for, oh gosh, quite a a couple of years, quite a few years, actually. Um, I use one in private practice and I use one in mobile dentistry as well. I am a huge uh, fan uh, and ergonomics. I talk about occupational health, ergonomics, posture and stuff a lot. So that was my main driver of switching to a cordless handpiece. What I'm really excited about now is to share some research with you today on how these cordless hand pieces are not only great for ergonomics, but also probably pretty phenomenal for infection control also. So I'm just sitting here waiting patiently. I'm excited to see. Um, do we have any results kind of coming in? Do you use a cordless hand piece? Yes or no? 65% say no. Nope, 67% say no. 67% say no. Maybe we'll just give it like five or 10 more seconds. Oh my gosh. Well, this is really good news. You guys are going to be super excited to hear some of the research we're going to go over today. And then um, maybe if we were to do this webinar in a couple of months, the results might be different. So it looks like just under 70% of you um, are not using cordless hands tape. And like I say, my main driver for switching over was all about ergonomics. My husband is a physical therapist. So in our house, we either talk about ergonomics and posture or we talk about teeth. Um, we're a pretty, pretty exciting household, let me tell you. So my main driver for switching over was ergonomics. You know, as dental pr practitioners, I think no matter what role you play in the dental office, it's really, really important for us to be looking at our risk for musculoskeletal disorders. And we're going to finish up today's webinar touching on that ergonomic piece as well. So kind of going back to just that awareness and where are we at now kind of, you know, looking at aerosols is aerosols are actually generated by two different things coming together. We have our dental equipment, you know, which could be our ultrasonic, it could be our air water syringe, it could be our laser, it could be our dental hygiene handpiece. We have this dental equipment that we spray air and water out of, and then it goes inside of a patient's mouth. Once it goes inside of the patient's mouth, it becomes exposed to contaminants, right? 
We know that inside the patient's mouth is saliva and blood and bacteria and viruses and, you know, biofilm, all those really harmful things. And it's the combination of these two things coming together that produces the, the aerosol and splatter and things that we get very concerned about in dentistry. Everybody on this call, I know, is very, very aware of what goes on in the oral microbiome and that when our dental equipment comes in contact with the patient's saliva, it is now contaminated. The mouth is never a sterile environment, no matter how clean somebody's mouth is. Bacteria, viruses, fungi, and now we have even know that there's parasites living in the oral cavity. So, you know, the oral microbiome is filled with a complex environment of all these contaminants that we know can wreak havoc on overall health and wellness, but then also go out into the environment and can spread from person to person through splatter and aerosols. So splatter is this, those large particles that we can typically see. They are typically air, water, or solid. They are usually visible. They're large droplets. They're greater than 50 microns. They can land on surfaces, um, on the floor. They can even land in our hair. That's why now I wear a scrub cap at work. Um, there is a whole new attention to splatter because of, you know, COVID and us looking at aerosols. And now we know that splatter is considered just as dangerous as aerosols. So we should be very concerned about aerosols and splatter. This new attention has kind of been driven by the pandemic. But we also know that all these particles in the splatter can land. They're heavy. They don't go very far, but they can land on a surface and then they can get stirred up and move to another surface or they can move from surface to surface or person to person or on our hair um, or on our shoes, and they can potentially be considered equally as dangerous as aerosols. Aerosols, of course, is the one that gets all of the media attention. We know that aerosols are harmful because they are tiny, tiny, tiny particles, tiny microns, less than 50 microns in size. They're suspended in air. They can reside in the air for very long periods of time, and they can travel very long distances as well. In fact, they can travel all the way through our whole entire respiratory system, through our trachea, through our bronchi, all the way then down into the bronchioles and into the tiniest, tiniest little portions of our respiratory system and the alveoli. That's why aerosols are so concerning. We know that aerosols can travel anywhere from 1.5 meters to about 11 meters. To kind of put that into perspective for you, they can travel anywhere from about three feet to 36 feet away. Um, so they can travel a long ways. We also know that if we look at aerosols and splatter in dentistry, if we look at the literature and the evidence, we do know that several very, very concerning, you know, medical conditions can be transmitted through these particles in the air. We know that tuberculosis, um, herpes, measles, mumps, and rubella, pertussis, SARS, um, and it's kind of new like kid on the block, COVID-19, influenza, and even Ebola. So as we look at, you know, how do we provide care that's safe, it's really important for us to consider all of the various ways that we can look at aerosol and splatter mitigation. You know, we, want, we know that aerosols and splatter generated during dental procedures have the potential to spread infection to dental personnel and other people in the dental office. So that's, you know, spreading it from patient to provider, from provider to provider, to from provider to other staff in the dental office. And even, you know, patients that come in in the rooms afterwards, and even visitors, you know, think about the people that come into the dental office um, who don't have a choice, maybe their job depends on it. What about our mail carriers and UPS and FedEx and our sales reps, you know, that come into the office? It's impossible to completely eliminate the risk posed by dental aerosols. So it's really critical for us to look at aerosol and splatter mitigation 
And while it's impossible to completely eliminate them, it's actually very possible to minimize the risks with relatively simple and inexpensive precautions. So it's critically important for us to continue to follow universal precautions like we typically do. Um, but however, the really one kind of key takeaway if you learn nothing else from today is that whether you're a dentist, a hygienist, an assistant, a dental therapist, any provider that's providing dental care, the number one aerosol and splatter mitigation tool that we have is high volume evacuation. And it should be used for all dental procedures. When I said it was impossible to eliminate aerosols, um, that was not true. Actually, it is possible. And we actually, many of us did do it during COVID. That is shutting down our offices completely where we're not providing care. That's elimination. Um, I think most of us realize that we can't continue to do that, right? People need essential uh, dental care and we are the healthcare providers that are ready and willing to deliver to them in a safe manner. So when I said that we can't eliminate it, we can, but that would mean closing our doors and none of us really want to do that again. So, you know, as we are closing out October, I just wanna say happy National Dental Hygiene Month to all the hygienists out there. Um, you are an amazing workforce. I don't think there's ever been a better, more exciting time to be a dental hygienist than right now. You are important and you're valued and you are an essential healthcare provider. So thank you so much. And we do not wanna go back to the point where we're closing our doors. So, you know, COVID-19 brought a lot of things to light that maybe some of us knew before, reminded us, you know, that we might need to create change. And hopefully all of this prepares us for the future. And if there is another pandemic, we'll be primed and ready to go. As we look at this OSHA risk pyramid, uh, this is from the U.S. Department of Labor looking at, you know, aerosol generating risk. We know that if we provide aerosol generating procedures on a COVID patient, that the risk is extremely high. But OSHA also says that when we perform aerosol generating procedures on well patients, the risk is still very high. So, you know, I think we can kind of take COVID out of the equation moving forward and know that there are many viruses and many medical conditions that we do not want to be transmitting from patient to patient or provider or to staff. So anytime we're creating aerosol generating procedures, the risk is considered very high. And as we look at the hierarchy of controls, we know that we can't totally eliminate them unless we close our doors. Many times we can't replace the hazard. Um, we can't isolate people. But, you know, what we can do is we can look at changing the way that we work. We can make better decisions with our equipment and, you know, really, of course, then at the bottom tier of that is using PPE to protect the workers. So one thing that we can be 110%, um, basically 110% sure of is that you can always count on dentistry that we're going to be exposed to aerosols anytime that we're mixing our dental equipment with, or even you know, just a patient with saliva during most dental procedures. Oops, sorry, here I got. Sorry, I got a little um, off track here. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so as we move forward and we look at the kind of that risk mitigation, risk reduction, we know that the high volume evacuation used with aerosol generating procedures is probably the number one tool that we have and can reduce aerosol um, you know, by 70 to 90%. We also have seen articles coming out about the value of pre-procedural rinses, you know, and kind of reducing all that free floating kind of viral load in the mouth. I always use laser bacterial reduction before starting any procedures on my patients. Now we know laser is another really great tool for uh, bacterial decontamination. And of course we have our PPE, our N95s and our face shields. And then we have dry field or isolating devices that also um, should also always be used with a high volume evacuation. Engineering controls, we've seen a lot of things coming out about ventilation, you know, good airflow, uh, ultraviolet light disinfection, you know, patient placement and patient volume. 
And then, of course, you know, when COVID first came out, we saw lots of contraptions coming out onto the market that would help capture this aerosol. So not really looking at reducing the aerosol, which is what we're going to talk about with hand pieces, but actually just capturing it, you know, once that it's actually produced. What I'm really excited about talking about with the hand pieces with is how to not capture it once it's out there, but how do we reduce the volume and the spread with our, with our cordless hand pieces. This is just another picture of one of those contraptions that came out. And of course, you know, this is a love-hate relationship for me because while we're seeing these great contraptions coming out to capture aerosol, they're also kind of an ergonomic, um, kind of a nightmare sometimes that we have to work around some of now just extra equipment in our operatory. Um, this is just a quick short little video to show you some innovations that's been coming out to really help encourage dental practitioners to actually use a high volume evacuation. So as we go through now and start looking at some practice solutions for aerosols and splatter, specifically with hygiene hand pieces, to talk about how we're going to navigate this new normal that we're in with this new heightened awareness. You know, how do we protect the patient and the practice and the provider? And how do we make really good evidence-based decisions to reduce aerosol and splatter? So, you know, choosing a hand piece is essential. We can't really do our job without it, right? So one thing that I'd really like you guys to consider moving forward is when you are choosing which hand piece that you're using, you know, is infection control part of the equation? Let's look at this research that I was alluding to when we first started. Um, there is new groundbreaking study that was just released this year, it was the first of its kind, really looking specifically at infection control of the leading, leading hygiene hand pieces on the market. So they compared four of the leading hand pieces on the market, specifically with infection control. But then they went a little bit farther and started looking at some safety, effectiveness, and ergonomics and comfort of the hand piece for the hygienist as well. So this study was conducted the lead by the lead investigator is Dr. Petra Wilder Smith. She is an amazing researcher and you can go to YouTube and find all kinds of really amazing research that she's done. I have watched hours of her research now on a whole bunch of different topics. But this study obviously piqued my interest because it's specifically done by dental hygienists. This was the study conducted out of the University of California, Irvine, looking at aerosol and splatter from coronal polishing with four different hand pieces. Three cordless and one corded or air driven. How did it work? And then finishing up the study with how did it feel for the hygienist? So looking at these hygiene hand pieces, cordless versus cord, corded, looking at speed, pressure, effectiveness, and efficiency, practitioner comfort. But the overarching goal of this study was specifically in regards to infection control to map and quantify aerosol and splatter from hygiene hand pieces. So there was um, a few different kind of sub studies done in this big study. But there was a team of hygienists that participated in all 16 arms of this study, looking at 16 different metrics or different things. The hygienists that did, looked at all of the different components of the study, uh, they polished both teeth on the both on the maxilla and on the matable. The studies was done in a were done in a lab on typodonts that had lips and cheeks. The age range from the hygienists in the study was 38 to 54, with over 11 years of experience. And there were some really great technology and tools used, uh, tensional diameter, high resolution photography and video, the air intake and outtake for the rooms was turned off about 30 minutes before the study, again, to reduce any um, airflow variables, the room temperature and humidity were maintained and constant and monitored throughout the study, and the hygienist polished with Profi paste. The study specifically looked at aerosols with two key variables being identified, speed and polishing with or without high volume evacuation. The results were pretty overwhelming and, and Dr. Petra Wilder-Smith 
if you watch some of her videos, she goes on to say about how quite surprised she was about ones that performed really well and ones that performed really poorly and, and just the drastic differences of speed and HVV, HVE, specifically using cordless hand pieces. So overall, the Aero Pro was found to significantly generate less aerosol, less volume of aerosol, and produced less spread of the aerosol. The distance was significantly less than some of the other cordless hand pieces as well. So the Premier Aero Pro produced less aerosol volume than the other hand pieces, and the Premier Aero Pro um, produced less aerosol spread. It didn't spread as far a distance as the other hand pieces. If you really want to watch Dr. Petra Wilder Smith talk about this research and kind of how surprising it was, there's a really great video that um, she did in partnership with Premier Dental Products and Kara RDH. And she goes on to talk about the variables that affect aerosols and splatter when polishing. And that some kind of key findings from the study was that there is a significant difference whether you use constant speed or intermittent speed and turbulence on the two surface. And both of these things are kind of directly related to the use of a rheostat. And that when a rheostat is not used, we have more constant speed and we have less turbulence on the two surface, which then in turn significantly produce less aerosol and splatter. She goes on to say that pressure plays a very key role also that we do not need a lot of pressure and we do not need a lot of speed to create a very nice, good, healthy surface to remove stain, to strengthen the teeth and to produce less aerosols and splatter. And then again, just reiterating that the high volume evacuation is really your number one tool in reducing aerosol and splatter. So when she goes on to talk about how the AeroPro cordless Profi handpiece really kind of exceeds all of the other ones in the study, it's because it has this ability to have a one touch button on and off. There is no rheostat. So getting rid of that rheostat automatically produces a more constant speed, less turbulence and less aerosol and splatter. Um, it also goes on to talk about how when you push on a rheostat, it creates a burst of aerosol or an aerosol cloud um, and a touch button does not do that. And that reduced speed is pretty critically important to reduce infection and transmission risk. The study goes on to say like, well, what is, if we don't need a lot of pressure, we don't need a lot of RPMs, what do we really need to do a really good job polishing uh, so the patient feels like they have a great, nice, clean surface, but the practitioner also feels like satisfied. And overwhelmingly, they were able to determine from this study that about 1500 RPMs was considered the sweet spot. It was effective and it was pleasing both to the patient and the provider and produces again, less aerosol and splatter. So the Premier AeroPro has a button that has three speeds. You push it for low, push it for, again for medium and push it for high. 1500 is the medium speed on the premier cordless handpiece. So we do not need a lot of pressure. We do not need a lot of speed. We do not need a lot of that burst that comes from a rheostat. Um, in fact, those types of behaviors actually increase um, that aerosol and splatter production. So low speed versus high speed is pretty critical. If we just reduce the speed, reduce the pressure, um, we can reduce producing aerosol and the spread of aerosol cons considerably. The study also goes on to talk about how the cordless hand pieces um, produce a cleaner effect in a faster amount of time. Uh, the Premier AeroPro was also found to lead the rest of the cordless hand pieces on the market for cleanliness and efficiency. In, in a timed 60 second trial, the Premier AeroPro cleaned more surfaces. And then in a full mouth polishing, the Premier AeroPro was able to um, polish the, the mouth in the fastest amount of time. So, on average, there was about a 30, se 30 second reduction in polishing time with a cordless handpiece. And of course, I think it's important to say that all of the cordless hand pieces on the market do meet CDC compliance um, requirements and all of them now come with barriers. They're easy to wipe down and keep clean. And that is the standard with cordless polishers in, our, in the marketplace now. Kind of moving away from Dr. Petra Wilder-Smith's research and kind of going on to another article that was just published. This was just published in RDH Magazine by Ann Guillen. She goes on to talk, uh, she's made some really great points and she has a really good chart in RDH Magazine that has all the cordless 
um, polishers on the market now. It has all the cordless polishers and it talks about the RPMs, um, the battery life and the warranty and how to clean them and disinfect them. And so that's a great article if you're looking to compare um, cordless hand pieces. But even by looking at that chart, the Premier Aero Pro really stands out, excels and leads the market. It has the longest warranty on the battery and handpiece than the other ones. It has very, very easy infection control, wipeable surfaces. It comes with surfaces, it comes with barriers. You can use cabbie wipes on it, which is incredibly important to me that I can use the same wipe on my handpiece that I can use to wipe down the rest of my room. I don't need a special alcohol-based product or a special product to wipe down it. So, you know, for me, that is a really great selling point for this handpiece as well. Long lasting battery, they all have really great batteries. The Premier Aero Pro does have that ideal RPM range that 500 is the low speed, 1500 is the middle, 2800 is the high. Um, ideal touch button for reduced aerosol and splatter reduction and no rheostat. So we know that we can reduce the aerosol cloud or that you know aerosol burst, constant speed, which means very, very little to minimal turbulence on enamel. If we kind of just move on looking at hand pieces beyond aerosols and splatter and look at you know, ergonomics and PP burden and portability and versatility, and one of my favorite things to talk about is mobile dentistry. Um, this is just the findings that if we take now this research that was done by Dr. Petra Smith on infection control, you know, she said, well, actually, I didn't want to just stop at infection control. That was what we were going to look at first. But, you know, let's actually talk to the dental hygienists who are using these cordless or these hand pieces and see, you know, how do they feel? Let's measure some of their muscle movement. Let's look at their posture and went on a step further to kind of look at ergonomics with with hygiene hand pieces. And they did this by doing electromyography, measuring the activity of muscles involved in this kind of high pinch force that we know dental hygienists use for almost every single procedure that we do. And overwhelmingly, the results there said that dental hygienists prefer cordless handpiece over a corded handpiece for ergonomics. The, her study goes on to say, again, that the AeroPro um, far surpassed the rest of the hand pieces in the study. And the AeroPro produced less fatigue, more comfort in the thumbs, the wrist, and the fingers, and the palms of the hygienist, and that the Premier AeroPro produced the best postural score while working as well. Then it kind of goes on a step farther, looking at all of those four muscle groups that were studied. You know, the AeroPro used the least muscle work in two or more muscles than any other hand pieces in the first 15 seconds. Also used the least amount of muscle work for each individual muscle for the entire polishing time and use the least amount of muscle work for all four muscles measured. So you can see why as an ergonomic kind of expert that I love cordless hand pieces. We know that musculoskeletal disorders, um, this is a real risk for all dental professionals, but especially dental hygienists. You know, it's estimated that up to 93% of hygienists are at a high risk for developing a musculoskeletal disorder at some point in your career. You know, this could lead to pain and suffering. It could mean early retirement. It could mean less job satisfaction. You know, we want to be able to do our jobs really good and effectively, but we also want to feel pretty amazing while we do it. We know that musculoskeletal disorders are injuries caused by wear and tear on our tendons, our ligaments, our nerves, our muscles, our joints, and our discs. And many of us are suffering either now or know somebody who is. And dental hygienists are especially at risk for musculoskeletal disorders because these are the top three contributing factors of musculoskeletal disorders by OSHA repetitive motion, force, and awkward positions. Well, it sounds like they were writing a job description for dental hygienists, right? This is actually the definition from OSHA, and we know that dental hygienists do repetitive motion all day long. We use a significant amount of force when we have to pinch and hold an instrument. And then of course, you know, unfortunately, many times we do have to put ourselves in these awkward positions. We know that musculoskeletal disorders are a primary risk factor for all clinicians, but especially dental hygienists. And we are probably a little bit more at risk than ever before. You know, many of us couldn't use power equipment during the pandemic. For me, I couldn't, I didn't use power equipment for seven months. I was hand scaling by state law. I couldn't, um, you know, so we did a lot of hand scaling. We had a lot more force, a lot more repetition, static postures, 
Um, and then, you know, we know that if we don't have super sharp, great, qual high quality instruments, you know, that's another kind of um, burden for us and risk factor for musculoskeletal problems. The OSHA goes on and many experts go on to say that, you know, forced repetition and awkward positions are by far the top meeting causes of musculoskeletal disorders and that if you have two or more, you're at an even higher risk. But a new risk factor has been added in recent years and that's sitting. So now we all have all four of the top, you know, um, kind of risk situations. And so it's very, very important for us to minimize risk wherever we can, whether we're talking about aerosols or splatter or whether we're talking about ergonomics. And I think it's important to remember that dental hygienists are at a high risk for carpal tunnel syndrome. First of all, because we're female um, and because of anatomy. Uh, unfortunately, because of women's anatomy, we have a smaller, more constricted um, tunnel in there. And then repetitive motion, pinch grip, sitting, uh, females, those are all considered risk factors for carpal tunnel. But I think what's going to be very interesting to see, and we're just starting to see some research coming out right now, um, most musculoskeletal disorders, most research study has all been done on upper bodies of dental hygienists, right? Our lots have lots of studies done on our, our wrists and our hands. We're starting to see more research coming out about shoulders and neck. And where I think the new frontier, the missing link is looking at ergonomic research on the lower body. We have all of the same anat anatomical structures. We have a tarsal tunnel in the foot that's very similar to the car carpal tunnel in the wrist. We know when we put our bodies in these awkward positions that it doesn't just affect one body part, it affects the whole kinetic chain. So I think we're going to start to see more and more research coming out about lower body ergonomics as well. I mean, I put this picture down here at the bottom of the screen. A couple years ago, this was my clinical practice workspace. And this is the reason I went to a cordless handpiece. I was so sick and tired of having rheostats and foot pedals everywhere. And everything that had a cord or a pedal compromised my body position. I couldn't necessarily place myself where I wanted to. I had to place myself around my equipment. And that was the big reason why I switched to a cordless handpiece is that how I, I can position myself where I want it and I can put my handpiece wherever I need it. This was a really great research art, uh, research that came out of the, the University of Iowa looking at foot position of dental hygienists, and it's really its first of its kind. I think we're going to see more research coming out about lower body ergonomics, but what we know is when we look at foot position of the dental hygienist at, at, and walking gait at the beginning of the week, towards the end of the week, we see significant changes in pressure points and gait of the dental hygienist. And walking gait is very important. Our normal natural walking gait um, should be neutral, right? So every, all of our body parts aligned and not one specific body part has more pressure than the other. When our gait changes, that means our foot position has changed, which now means our knee has changed, our hip has changed, our shoulder has changed, everything from head to toe has changed when we put our feet into awkward positions. So I think as we look at cordless hand pieces, you know, we touched on the infection control, we touch on ergonomics, um, and I really just kind of want the big takeaway here to be is anytime we have to put our foot in an awkward position to reach for your rheostat, that can actually have consequences um, along the whole body, the whole anatomic kinetic chain which is why a few years ago I said, I'm getting rid of foot pedals, I'm cutting the cord and I'm getting rid of them. And I want my body to be in a more ideal, neutral position, ergonomically position, great position. So it's less you know, wear and tear on my, my bone, bones and joints and muscles and tendons. This is a picture here on the right side of that anatomic kinetic chain. And I'd like you to think of it like this. When we talk to our patients about the oral systemic link, that's super easy for us. Almost all of us understand it. We believe in it. We educate on it. You know, that means that what happens in the mouth doesn't just stay in the mouth. It goes everywhere else, right? Well, the anatomic kinetic chain is the same thing. If we put our arm or our, you know, shoulder, like this typical dental hygiene posture, we put one shoulder down, one shoulder up, and then we turn, and then we put our foot out, you know, all of these awkward positions all of these little tweaks that we do throughout a normal workday doesn't affect just that one body part. Our whole entire body is connected 
by bones and joints and ligaments and muscles and a respiratory system and a vascular system. And so we want our body to be in the most neutral position as possible and cordless hand pieces can help with that, especially the AeroPro that does not have a rheostat. So we have mobility, you know, total mobility with no foot pedal, no core drag, no rheostat. So less hip, leg and foot fatigue. You know, we have no excess of pressure, um, no turbulence on that two surface or less turbulence on that two surface. We don't have to apply pressure. We don't have to apply pressure on the tooth and we don't have to apply pressure on the rheostat. And then, you know, we know that these cordless hand pieces are ergonomically designed. They're balanced, they're lightweight, which helps reduce hand fatigue. Um, the Premier AeroPro has a swivel head, which allows for maximum kind of access and comfort to all those hard to reach places. And, you know, of course, all of that meet infection control standards. Um, this is me working in, in mobile dentistry. Portability and versatility is super important for me. And I think for a lot of practitioners out there, dentistry is changing. Private practice settings are becoming very demanding. We are we are doing way more than we've done before with way less time. We have new technology coming out. We're providing more services. We have practitioner expansion and workforce models are changing. In my private practice, I provide care in a private setting, but then I'm also mobilized to go out and provide care to some of our, our private practice patients in their home or in a nursing home. Um, and then I also own my own mobile dentistry business, which allows me to provide you know, enhanced access to care, more equitable uh, dental care too. And that's kind of become a necessity. You know, when we look at versatility and portability, that's inside the dental office and that's outside of the dental office. You know, mobile dental dentistry and teledentistry are not just because of the pandemic, they are here to stay. So the lack of cords, you know, the ease of sanitation, this long lasting battery life, the warranty, the fact that you can use any profi angle, you know, makes us a no brainer for versat versatility and portability. We want the ability, um, I want the ability to pack up my equipment and take it wherever I need to go. You know, we're seeing hygienists work in many various practice settings like pediatricians offices, urgent care centers, um, homeless shelters. And like I said, I think, you know, this very well could be the future of dentistry. This is just another picture of um, one of my mobile dentistry setups in a home, home health, using high volume evacuation. Um, I use the Premier AeroPro. But, you know, if we, we have other considerations to make, too. You know, these cordless hand pieces are just one tool in our toolbox. We have a lot of other things that we use and kind of following these ergonomic principles goes to instruments as well. Lightweight and ergonomic handles is a no-brainer for dental hygiene instruments. And there are several companies that make them. Premier has the Premier Air and the Big Easy Ultralight Scalers, which I love. They're super lightweight. They have really nice texture to them. We have, you know, the Hufridi Harmony Scalers, the PDT um, Resin Scalers. What I really, you know, just encourage here is to just don't get locked into one, one instrument, you know, company. Try a whole bunch of them and mix it up. I try to get rid of repetition as much as possible. So in my instrument setups, I have a whole bunch of different companies, but make sure that we have these nice, big, lightweight ergonomic handles that have some texture to them, that have some shape to them to reduce hand fatigue. Um, and I want to thank Lil Cavarella for sharing these photos with me a couple of weeks ago. I just had to put them in my presentation because I think she makes a really great point. You know, as our role as a healthcare provider has evolved, you know, through these decades, um, so should our skills and so should our instruments and so should our dental equipment. So I don't do anything the same as I did when I graduated from dental hygiene school 26 years ago. I do everything almost different. So it would make sense, you know, that our hand pieces are changing as well. So when we're looking at instruments, you know, think about shape and weight and texture and balance. Please be very, very aware that, you know, the added PPE that we're wearing now really are causing some physical and emotional burden to us. It is not easy to do our jobs. Again, I'm preaching to the choir, you know this, but this PPE toll is significant, right? Headaches and mouth breathing and dehydration and exhausting and irritability and, and the list goes on and on and on. So it's very, very important for us to look at strategies to balance you know, our work environment. This comes from self-care to work policies to dental equipment.
You know, we want to make sure that we're creating a work environment that's safe. It's safe for us. It's safe for our patients that we, you know, use research and critical thinking and evidence to make our purchasing decisions. You know, don't just use equipment because it's something that you've always done. Look at what is the better way that we can do things? You know, once you know better, you do better. How can we do what we've been doing? How can we do it better? How can we do it safer? You know, so I just want to finish up. I guess it would be kind of um, silly to talk about polishing in a handpiece without just touching a little bit on polishing, polishing agents to go along with these hand pieces. And I really just want to encourage you to look at evidence, to try new products, you know, hold lunch and learns, talk to sales rep sales reps, this is how we prepare for the future and make really, really good evidence-based decisions that are not just reactive, but proactive. So when we're looking at chronic, chronal polishing, you know, agents, it's important to look at the agents, you know, why are we doing it? Is it just for cosmetic or is it really for health? Is it really for therapeutic? You know, is it to make the teeth look good or is it to make them stronger and healthier? Hopefully it's both, right? So, you know, in reducing air looking at polishing agents, we want to make sure, you know, that we include the benefits, the therapeutic benefits of polishing agents, as well as infection control and, and patient selection. We know that our polishing agent selection should be based on the hardness of the tooth structure or the restoration, and the hardness of the polishing agent should never be, you know, harder than the surface being polished. Many abrasives used in some paste can be up to 10 times harder than the tooth surface that they're being used to polish. We know that coronal polishing can remove that outer fluoride rich layer of enamel. So it's important for us to consider the amount of abrasive particles in the agent, the speed of that rotating cup. Again, if we are making the speed faster, more RPMs, it, they are, it's going to make our paste more abrasive. We want minimal contact time, right? We know that the longer that we polish, the, the again, um, the more aerosol generating procedures that we're producing. And we really don't need to use a lot of force. Kind of profi paste and polishing protocols, right, is use the least abrasive product that you can. If you have a, you know, an area where you need a coarser grit, you know, start with coarser and then progress to a finer grit. As the grit decreases through the process, those scratches and abrasives, abrasions will come, will become smaller, making a more smooth appearance. Um, we should change the profi cup if we're changing grit because little particles will be stuck in the profi cup. Um, so not changing that profi, profi cup kind of defeats the purpose of reducing the grit. And I really, again, kind of go back to evidence and science of why you're polishing. What is your goal? My goal is to always make the tooth surface stronger. So what I love about polishing paste now, um, specifically the Premier uh, Enamel Pro paste, is it has ACP technology in it, amorphous calcium phosphate. We know that when we combine ACP technology to fluoride, it makes fluoride work better. You know, we can bombard the oral cavity with a ton of fluoride but it doesn't really matter unless the fluoride is actually going into the tooth surface. So we know when we add amorphous calcium phosphate to polishing paste, that it allows more fluoride to go into the tooth surface, which is the super important part. So we look at amorphous calcium phosphate, you know, it helps strengthen the tooth surface. It stimulates, stimulates remineralization of the enamel. It reverses demineralization. It polishes and shines. The teeth feel smoother. They look whiter. They're more bright, you know, more of that beautiful luster that our patients want when they get their teeth polished. And we know that amorphous calcium phosphate with fluoride fills in all of those surface defects. So we know that when the surface is smooth and it's filled in with the ACP, then we know that biofilm isn't going to attach to it as easy. So as we kind of move into 2022, you know, looking at what our new normal is, is, you know, we are using aerosol generating procedures. Some of us, some of us are not. Um, we're doing a lot of hand instrumentation, but we do know that it's super, super important to really, you know, look at the risks and make really, really good decisions to minimize, to minimize the risk as much as we possibly can. You know, so protecting your practice and your providers and your patients from aerosols is seeking out practice solutions to reduce this inevi inevitable risk that we talked about, that oral microbiome, understanding the risks and navigating this new normal. You know, the pandemic showed us the change is necessary to ensure our safety. Airborne droplets or liquid droplets are often invisible to the naked eye, but they are considered dangerous. And the dental office is a uniquely risky environment. 
It's home to many hazards and we wanna reduce the risk whenever we can. So those who are using coronal polishing hand pieces can reduce aerosol and splatter by making important decisions. You know, hand piece designs plays a key role in the production of aerosol and splatter. High volume evacuation should be used at all times. And our technique plays a key role in the production of aerosol and splatter. We only need about 1500 RPMs. We wanna polish, you know, the minimal amount of time and use the least amount of abrasive agent that we can. So I am always available after this webinar as well. I'm going to bring up a screen that has my personal information. I also provided a handout to Henry Shine if you'd like the handout. And I think we do have a few minutes for question and answer. And again, happy National Dental Hygiene Month and thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. Um, like she said, we do have 15 minutes left. We've only got one question in the queue. So if anyone has questions, let them fly. Uh, the only question I'm seeing is what is the cost of the polisher, if you know? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. <laughs> I should know that because I have purchased several of them myself. Um, I do not know the answer to that question. I'm so sorry. Um, if anybody knows, maybe they could pop it into the into the chat or the Q&A box. Um, otherwise, you know, you can obviously find um, the Premier Aero Pro uh, is a product that Henry Shine carries. I've purchased several through them. Um, you can also go to the Premier Products um, website and you can find a sales rep in your area who can give you a lunch and learn um, or give you pricing information. And the price, I guess, might vary depending on, you know, what type of a practice you live in, what part of the country you live in and things like that as well. And I do know that the kit comes in a variety of different ways. I should touch on that too. You know, you can buy just a starter kit um, or you can buy, you know, a complete kit. I always buy the complete kit and that's the unit itself with, I think, three different sheaths. So I always have a new sheath for every patient. Another good question here. Can you try before you buy? You know, I know that you could before COVID, and I know during once COVID came that that kind of went away. That would be something to probably talk to the um, Premier Dental Products about your sales rep in, in your area would be able to absolutely answer that question for you. Um, now that dental conventions are coming back, a really, really great way to try any new product is to go to a dental convention and go to every single booth that's there at the exhibit hall. I know Premier Dental um, is usually at most major dental conventions. And they have a wonderful sales team that will show you all their products. They'll give you um, brochures and pamphlets on research and science. And then you can, you know, pick them up and try them and practice on a type of dent and things like that, too. I'm sorry, I don't sell product. I only um, use it and read research about it. So I, I know that a premier sales rep will be able to help you with those questions. Yep, and I'm seeing as well, there is a tryout program if they contact oh, Premier Dental. Excellent, thank you so much. All right, let me just check the chat here. I don't think I'm seeing anything else. It's your lucky day, not too many questions. All right, well, here's my email. Please reach out anytime. Um, it sounds like you can go to Henry Schein to, to order the Premier Aero Pro, and then you can also go to the Premier website. Premier has a great Facebook, um, Instagram, social med media, tw uh, Twitter. They have contests and prizes and, and lots of great information on their social media. That's a great way to get information too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lancet. Great information. We did record this webinar, so everyone will get a recording within one week of today. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out, webinars at henryshine.com or email Lancet directly. And then if you'd like to attend any future Henry Shine webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. That's all I got. I'll give you 12 minutes back in the hour. So thank you for attending, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.